this video was supposed to be a cute little vlog to show you guys just how I take my rat boys to the vet to get them neutered and now it's become a video where I talk about how one of my boys almost died. So yeah. <laughs> Today we are joined by Ruby as a little emotional support animal <laughs> um, and also because she kind of looks like Emil, which is the main rat in question in today's video. Today I want to talk about how Emil almost died after getting him neutered and kind of how this whole story got to this point. So yeah, let's get started. I got Remy and Emil in January of 2021 when they were one month old. I sadly bought them at the pet store and you guys know that I'm an avid advocate for adopting or shopping responsibly and not buying at pet stores and one of the reasons for that is my own experiences with having rats from the pet store. They were always super playful with each other when they were younger uh, and would have those like tussles between siblings and stuff. Uh, which is totally normal, but that kind of changed once they turned six months old because that's when rats reach their sexual maturity. So they can start reproducing already at six months old. Um, so it was expected that they would have a ton of hormones in their body and that some of the fights uh, that were playful before would now kind of be a little more dominant, but I didn't think that they would start having fights where... Emil specifically would be the one screaming bloody murder. I always thought uh, he was getting killed or something and Remy would be the one like chasing him. So I was like super surprised and also kind of scared as a first time rat owner because I was always told that hormonal fights um, are like important for them to kind of establish um, which kind of like dominance hierarchy they have between themselves um, but I was always told the rule no blood no foul so as long as there's no blood that's perfectly okay they should be able to kind of learn from themselves to tussle it out uh, but then be fine the problem with not really a problem but the strange thing about Remy and Amy's fights was that they were never bloody. So I always had this like phrase in my mind that no blood, no foul. I just thought that ca this cannot be hormonal. Maybe there's a problem with Emil. Why is he screaming so much? Why does he seem to be scared of his brother when they are, there are like no scars on him? Like what's making him so afraid? But then after like a month or two, um, when it was already September, I had already decided you know what, no matter if this is hormonal or not, it's always better for animals to get neutered, to, especially with rats, so that they don't get illnesses like tumors and stuff, um, and just generally for them to be more relaxed. So I thought, like, even if this isn't hormonal, it would contribute to Emil being more relaxed. And it did. I got the rats to a veterinarian. They both got neutered. And at first I thought everything was fine because um, just Amy Lou was so lively. He was like jumping around. It seemed like he hadn't gone through surgery at all. He's like dying to go outside. Like, sir, you just got your balls cut off. Can you go inside and rest, please? No, stop doing acrobatics. Um, so I was really excited because I got them neutered. Uh, especially because I was planning on um, fostering some rats and maybe even adopting them. You know, one of the foster raddies is here with me right now. <laughs> so yeah, basically the idea was to put the girls with the boys um, to see how they would get along and stuff, especially because um, one of the things that I knew would probably contribute to Remy and Emil getting along better would be to put them in a larger group because rats, even though many people say that the minimum 
uh, is to have a pair of rats. I personally would now, after my experiences, say that the minimum should be three rats because rats do better in groups because they can establish a hierarchy way better when they have like more rats than when it's only one rat kind of dominating over the other. So that was the plan. Remy and Emil were, in my eyes, um, really healing well with the surgery. They were jumping around with no problem at all. Um, but then the date came where we had to bring the two boys to the vet so that they can check how they have healed, if everything is going well, if they still have to take the medication, etc., etc. And when we got there, um, they saw that Remy had healed up perfectly, but Emil had a huge abscess on his balls. Even though I had like checked every day and they seemed fine, it must have left, like developed maybe like a day or two before we got to the vets because I hadn't noticed it and it was actually quite huge and just filled with pus. So they decided to open him back up again. Um, and this time, instead of using kind of like an adhesive that they used to close the wound and this adhesive just slowly um, deteriorates uh, with time, they just said, let's just stitch him up normally because um, they had the suspicion that maybe Emil was actually allergic to this type of adhesive. It's extremely rare, so I don't know what's with this rat. But you're gonna say that there are many more rare things that are going to come up in this story. So basically, um, he got stitched up again and the healing process started once again. And he was doing fine again, like he was just jumping around. You didn't even notice that um, he would have any pain at all. So again, a week later or two, we had to bring him back to the vet so that they check how he's doing. And he was doing fantastic. Everything had healed up. We thought, okay, this is the last time that for now we have to bring him to the vet. Um, probably when he gets older, maybe something will come up. But for now, the whole neutering process, done. Um, and coincidentally, just a day after being at the vet, suddenly I come into the room um, and a little warning for people that do not like to see blood. I will show some pictures now of how the cage looked of the boys. I will blend them in and you just have to click on this timestamp, which is where the story will continue. So I went into the room of the boys. Here are the pictures. And as you can see, it looked like some rat had exploded like i was so scared i thought oh my god what if these like fights between them um have now gotten worse because ever since they got neutered they were actually like super lovey dovey they were sleeping together they were snuggling they were um like cleaning each other so i thought like what's happening now why are they fighting again even though I hadn't heard anything but then I went to check on Emil and I saw that um, where his what's it called like pee hole or urethra I'm not sure um, but where he is supposed to pee out of there was blood coming out and it's not like pee with a little bit of blood it was just straight up blood so I was extremely scared and the same night I called the vets and I was like, my rat um, is bleeding a lot uh, from his pee hole. We have no idea what's wrong with him. Like literally a day after being at the vets for them to check how he has healed up. The next day we have to go back because he decides that the day after being at the vet, he should just go back. Um, in our family, we now have the running joke that he likes to be at the vets, basically. So we brought him to the vet the same night and they said that um, they didn't really know what to do at that exact moment. Um, and they also didn't have time that same night to do like an ultrasound to check what's kind of going on um, in that area. So they said that since they didn't have time that night, um, I should just go back home and if everything was fine again and he didn't bleed again then maybe it was just like something burst and now everything is fine 
But if he bleeds again, then we should uh, schedule an appointment where they can actually thoroughly check him. So for the next two days, Emil didn't bleed. And I almost thought like, okay, this may be over. Maybe this was like a little fluke. He just cut himself somewhere. I don't know. But it was kind of suspicious how much he bled. But then two days later, again, I come into the room. I get a huge shock thinking, okay, now he's dead or something. Um, No, for some reason, again, Amy looked absolutely fine. But for some reason, he was almost like bleeding out, basically. This journey with him really showed me how easily... Um, illnesses, especially in rodents, but also in other animals, can go unnoticed because they are just experts at hiding it because that's what they have learned from nature. You have to hide that you have any illness or that you're injured so that you aren't like easy prey. Um, So sometimes you might only notice an injury or a problem once it's too late to treat it. So it was really fascinating to see like he looked like Always, he just jumped around, had no problems, uh, was being all cute, but for some reason, he was just bleeding out of his pee hole. So when they did the ultrasounds, they found that he had a mass in his bladder. So they went ahead and um, like pulled a piece out of that to send it to a laboratory to kind of figure out um, if it's like a tumor growing in there or if it's just like maybe a blood clot for some unknown reason, maybe um, something that the vets told me that they were speculating that maybe having that big abscess and getting like double surgery um, might have like had a toll on his body and that's why he just developed that and that it just had to flow out. And thankfully, after we got the test results back, we were lucky enough, it wasn't a tumor. It was some kind of accumulation of like, blood or something like that um, and he just had to kind of pass it and for some reason um, he just bled those two times and then he stopped Um, so that was another shock but then relief that nothing was wrong this whole like story between him getting neutered and him having these problems was like September October and November And now in December, we thought everything was fine. And suddenly I came into the room and started hearing him like breathe. I could hear how he was breathing. It was kind of like this. So I thought that maybe he had some sniffles and stuff um, and that he would just get well in a few days or something. And from one day to the other, he suddenly had so much trouble breathing. He almost couldn't eat or not almost he couldn't eat anymore Uh, but it was just like at a flip of a switch he was just having this little trouble breathing and I thought it was just a little like sinus uh, problem and stuff just a little cold and then from one day to the other he suddenly couldn't breathe anymore Um, when I gave him food he tried to eat it so he was food motivated he was eating it um, but he had trouble because every time he ate, that was would block the ability for him to breathe for some reason, and he would start choking and stuff, so he just wouldn't eat anymore. And from one day to the other, he like dropped 30 grams, which is a lot for a rat. So again, immediately called the vets, like, no idea what's wrong with him. Maybe he has like a sudden um, respiratory infection, something like that that just progressed from one day to the other. So we brought him to the vets and they said that his state was so bad that he would have to stay and they treated him. He had to do oxygen therapy and once he was um, stabilized enough for him to like actually start eating again and stuff, they were finally able to sedate him to actually run some tests because obviously you wouldn't sedate a rat that can't breathe on its own basically so they kind of had to treat him beforehand and after they run those tests they found out that it wasn't a respiratory infection Um, he had an enlarged heart so his heart is too big for his little body it pumps too much blood which kind of uh, made slowly his lungs just fill up with fluid and it was right during December 
that the fluid finally became too much and he suddenly had problems uh, breathing. So they gave us medication that we now have to give him twice a day. Um, but basically during those like two weeks where he was at the vets, um, it was extremely hard to like enjoy vacation basically because the vets themselves they didn't even want to tell me like oh 100% he will survive because even they were just like mm, we don't want to make any promises so that got me like really stressed and worried obviously once we got him back home and stuff and we started giving him his medicine um his breathing slowly started to um, really be good again. I can't even hear him breathe anymore. It's just uh, gone now. But obviously we have to give him this medication forever. Um, one of my worries is obviously that he will have a shorter life because it is possible that his little body will just give out at some point because of the amount of blood his heart has to pump and stuff. Um, so that is one worry of mine. And here's where the whole adopt don't shop advocacy comes in for me. Um, because I asked the vets, um, why do you guys think he has like an enlarged heart? Um, what could be the cause? And they said that most of the time, um, the reason was because of bad genetics. I have done a video about why buying animals from pet stores um, isn't like helping anyone, <laughs> especially not the animals. Um, and there I gave the example that my rats, uh, Remy and Emil, my two boys um, that were bought at the pet store are extremely skittish, even though I've had them for over a year now. But that video was filmed before this whole stuff went down with uh, Emil and now I can just see that it's way more than just not them liking human touch it's to the extent where these animals are being bred irresponsibly um, the breeders only care about money they don't care about the health about the genetics of the animal and then things like these happen and it's pretty common um, from my from the research that I've made that animals from pet stores will have heart problems and will, as a result of that, die earlier. I think it's extremely heartbreaking that companies that don't care about the animals and only about profit are essentially making animals go through the suffering and the pain of having health conditions and also for putting the consumers, the customers, through the pain of losing an animal as a result of those bad genetics. So that was basically a little recap of um, the months between September and December. For now, Emil has not expressed the need or want to go back to the vet, even though he seems to, you know, like it a lot. I hope that this video has helped you guys to kind of understand a little more about um, heart conditions in rats and also kind of what medical complications can happen with any pet. It doesn't have to be only rats. Um, and also one of the many reasons why you shouldn't buy pets from pet stores. Um, so if you enjoy this type of educational content and you want to see more and you haven't yet subscribed, then I hope you consider liking and subscribing down below. Um, other than that, thank you so much for watching, says little Ruby. Um, and we'll see you guys in the next video.